on the brink of what surely remains man's greatest achievement, the astronauts who are about to make history. 15 seconds, guidance internal, 13, 12, 11, and 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all engines running, launch commit, lift off, we have lift off. The tower is clear. And we have a roll for me. Roger. You have to get dropped on the top line. Top, Roger. The world collectively held its breath, following every twist and turn of the four-day voyage through space, until finally... The Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Neil Armstrong stepped gingerly onto the surface of the moon. The surface is fine and powdery. I can, I can pick it up loosely with my toe. The U.S. president made the most literal of long-distance phone calls to congratulate the pioneering astronauts. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made. I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you see. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. It was one of Nixon's predecessors who'd ordered the mission to the moon eight years earlier. The overriding aim was to get there before the Soviets did. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. And the men did return safely to a hero's welcome. The Apollo missions continued until 1972. Another 10 US astronauts walked on the moon's surface, but none of them were able to share the boast of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin that we were the first. John Brain, TRT World.